Hi guys, uh, Yuki here again. I'm here with an overly complicated and long guide on how to train your union because, okay, so first and foremost, we're doing this because Stasi event is coming. A lot of people have been asking me how to train your union and what they should focus on for union and how to use, make best use of Stasi event. So I'm making a whole union guide so I can just look at, I just give people this video and they don't, they don't have to keep asking me on, uh, on in chat about what, how or how to train their union. Okay. So I'll provide this link down in the description below later, so don't worry, you can just look at this later if you want. First and foremost, there's a bunch of things in here that you probably want to edit yourself, so you can just file, make a copy if you want. Uh, if you don't want to, you can just copy and paste the text inside, so that works. Uh, either one works. So yeah, anyways, <laughs> introduction, blah, 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 you can read it yourself if you want, uh, if you're not looking at the video. Okay, we'll jump right straight into it. So firstly, for Union, the thing that I see the people mess up the most when they when they think about training their union is that they don't have like a proper plan so they they don't know exactly what they want to train or what they should be training and they're always asking like you know what's next or what should i train next so one of the most basic things that you have to get down before you start training your union is to actually plan it out luckily for you uh you don't have to plan it out because i have everything planned out already and uh, uh basically these are all the useful like I'll, I'll list down all the useful things that you need to have and that you should work towards so saves you a lot of trouble, saves me a lot of trouble from having to list next time as well. So basically, um, in your union board, you have like 40 different characters that contribute to your union level. However, you can only place 36 of them onto your actual union grid. So you have to pick 36 that actually give you the most benefit based on what your main stat is and based on what you're playing. So um, most likely, uh, actually for, for like a lot of the class, like almost every single class in the game basically, Almost all the union pieces are relatively the same for the first 16. These first 16 union pieces are all very useful and they will definitely help you out. Uh, they all give positive effects for every single class. So um, basically I listed on, down the first 16 here. Uh, and then afterwards you will look at your main stat or your secondary stat. So I've also listed down your secondary stat, main stat, uh, all, all the stats basically like HP, even HP and MP. So what you have to do is basically you look at what your secondary stat is. For me, I'm a hero. So my main stat is strength, my secondary stat is dex. So I basically I need everything from here to here. Uh, and this is what I... And then afterwards there's a new list down here where you copy the first 16. And afterwards you add in all the rest of the strength and dex ones. It's very easy. You just copy, copy here. Copy. Oh, whoops. Okay. And then you paste like that, basically. But try and like clear the clear this thing first so that you have... Yeah, so you know what it is. And of course, your main is up here as well because your main will contribute towards your union level. Make sure there's no overlaps, by the way, because your main might also be one of these classes. You need to go and edit a bit yourself. But yeah, so this will give you like a very, very, very good idea of like what are the classes that you need to have or you want to have in the future on your union. And um, basically, it's all it will all be written down for you and you, you don't have to like worry about what's the next thing or what's the thing after that or what's the next thing after that. That you should be training for your union you can just list it all down and you have a nice you have a nice little checklist that you can like either highlight or whatever like maybe you want to highlight green when you're done with it or you want to highlight blue if you're halfway done with it and all that kind of stuff anyways moving on um okay so what you'll notice right one of the main things that you'll notice is that there are 40 characters that contribute to your union and there are 36 that con that you can put on your union board but not all of them are going to be filled up because you realize that you have way more uh you have way more slots than you do have characters that you can put on the union board for example like this like like for example for strength which has the highest number of main stat and the highest and the second highest number of secondary stat um i still can't fill up all 36 slots <laughs> so what this means is that there are a lot of like dead slots down here about five that basically contribute nothing at all to my main to my hero so what this means is that you can either fill these in with things that you want to use for your second main, like let's say your second main is an int class, you want to add in int here. Or if your second main is a luck class, you want to add in luck, up to you, it's up to you completely. Or if you're lazy, like me, <laughs> for for slot 32 to 40, basically I just made like a bunch of like similar classes. So I made like a whole bunch of demon slayers. Uh, if, you're, if you don't have access to kitchen or ring, uh, you can make a whole bunch of kanas here and just to fill up the union slot. Because what happens is that um, even though the classes are repeated, you still gain the same union level. So for example, if you have two Kanas that are level 200, they're going to contribute 400 levels to your union. 
it doesn't mean that they're repeated. Means that you don't get the you don't get the other two hundred levels. You still get two times uh, two hundred, so you still get four hundred. The problem is that when you put them on the union board, they don't stack. So like Kana gets five percent boss boss damage when you put it on the union board. It doesn't give you ten percent boss damage when you put two Kana's. It only gives you five percent. But the nice thing is, is that you get the union level. So obviously for those, because these are all dead slots that don't really contribute anything to your union, because you know that's not your main stat. It's not a secondary stat. It's not. It's not a useful buff. You can just fit it all with Kana's if you want, and then you gain a lot of like free union levels and train a very easy class to train all the way up to two hundred. So, uh, yeah, that's my suggestion for these slots. Either that or second main, like I said, up to you. It's really really up to you. Um. Okay, so as general rule of thumb, here is that you will want to train the mules that will help the rest of your mules out uh, first. So basically things like Zero, Hayato, Yunbo, Expo, and Night Lord, because these things give you positive union board effects. So if you look at Zero, Zero gives you 10% extra EXP at level 200. Hayato gives you 5% crit damage, Yunbo 5% crit damage, Expo gives you 4% crit, Night Lord gives you 4% crit. These are all very, very, very useful stats for your mules because your mules will lack damage. Crit rate helps because it helps you reach 100% crit rate. Crit damage helps because obviously it gives you damage when you're critting. And zero is, I don't really need to explain, it gives you 10% EXP, it's really good. So yeah, I would highly suggest that you train the union pieces that help the rest of your union out first, which is these five. Um, okay, so let's start with the basics. So from zero to 4k union. So from zero to 4k union, uh, it's a bit of a mess because most likely at zero to 4k union, you don't have all the link skills that you need leveled up. You don't have basically anything. This is assuming that you are a completely new player or like you're just starting out or you're a returning player that, that's just starting out or you're somehow like in limbo between 3 to 4k. Basically what you want to do is you want to settle your link skills first. First thing first things first, settle your link skills so that you have all the optimal link skills for grinding and for bossing. So link skills are basically the best way to gain damage for free because they provide quite a lot of damage, not as much as your gear obviously, but they still provide quite a lot of damage by themselves. So things, uh, so that I've gone, I've uh, taken liberty to arrange all the EXP link skills into one long twelve. Like these are all the twelve that I would use basically, and these are for bossing. And basically, I've arranged the first twelve here. The ones that are in bold are those that are considered hundred percent must-have links for grinding. These are 100% must-have for grinding. So these, this is combo experience, this is rune experience, this is 15% EXP, this is crit rate, this is crit damage. I will consider all these 100% necessary when you're starting the grind. Because one, you want 100% crit rate, two crit damage, and the rest is all EXP. These you can kind of switch around depending on what you need. Um, but I've listed the two most useless ones right at the bottom, which is Xenon and Hayato. So you can swap these out for other things that you need. Um, most likely, at most, you will need like the Explorer Archer to reach hundred percent crit rate. Uh, the Explorer Archer link gives you like ten extra ten extra percent crit rate. And that's about it. Um, for bossing, bossing is a lot more complicated. It depends on your class. It depends on uh, your gear. It depends on a lot of things. But I would say that the first seven here are completely mandatory. Like you must have them. So Demon Slayer, Kinesis, Resistance, Arc, Demon Avenger, Kana, Mihawk. These are must have, definitely have, uh, for bossing. Uh, Mihao is debatable if your class has 100% stuns or doesn't have 100% stuns, it really depends. But yeah, you, you get what I mean. Like these are what I would consider mandatory, so these are the things that you never ever swap out when you're bossing. The rest of them are debatable, you can swap them out however you want. These are all the unused link skills that you can use um, to swap out for from 8 to eight to 12, or 7 to 12, depending on whether or not you need Mihao. So yeah, play around the list, go and take a look, see what you need, think about what you need for bossing, and uh, I've listed down some reasons as to, and some uh, useful things about these skills that you might need. So yeah, just take a look at it, explore, swap in and out, up to you. Okay, so basically, first of all, the first thing you do is to settle all your link skills. Then after you set all your skills, you look back at your union planning section where you listed down all 40 of the characters that you want to you want to train to level 200, and then you start getting all those characters to level 140. This is for 0 to 4k union. You would, you would first settle all link skills, then afterwards you will start working on your union planning characters that you have planned out. Um, so there, will, there will be some overlaps, so you can just get those 120 characters to 140, or and then there, there are some that won't be overlapping and you actually need to go from 0 to 140 on them. Depends, right? 
So, uh, gearing for 0 to 140. Basically, for gearing for 0 to 140, I don't really recommend gearing that much. It's very easy to level from 0 to 140 without much gear at all. Uh, just rely on your link skills and rely on stuff that you pick up from bosses, or pick up, pick up from mobs, uh, all the gear that you pick up from mobs. You should be able to one-shot pretty much all the way until about 100. Shouldn't be a problem. Uh, that, that I do have some recommendations for gear. Uh, basically, I would recommend using tradable gear so that you can give them to all your mules. And then I will make them all epic and all percent all stats so that every single mule can use them. Um, it's just a recommendation. You don't have to. This is only if you have like a bit of money to spend. Uh, but it, it, it does help your earlier levels of training. So take a look here. It's like half earrings, all mask, tree branch. Evolving rings. Evolving rings are pretty expensive, so maybe not this one. And then snowshoes. Snowshoes you can just buy from Elnaf. And these are all low-level items that can be used all the way until 120 to 140. Um, yeah, and also, okay, this is one of the important things, is EXP buffs. EXP buffs are really, really important. Make sure you have all the possible EXP buffs that you can possibly get. <laughs> I've listed them all down. Yellow is for things that can be gotten for free, or you can get them through events somehow. Uh, and red things are things that you you definitely have to buy using cash. Uh, some of these are not really recommended. Um, they they cost money. <laughs> and then blue things are things that you need either a second computer or you need someone to help you with, like kitchen and ring. Those are the two important things. Okay, okay. Moving on to training match from zero to one forty. You can take a look at this yourself. It's quite self-explanatory. I've included some nice pictures so that you all can see. It's, the pictures might be a bit small, but just look for my cursor and you should be able to see where it's pointing and you'll be able to find the map basically. Yeah, just look for the, the white cursor and then try and navigate your way there. <laughs> but these are all the training maps that are, go that are going to take you from uh, 0 to 140. Okay, so another important note, if you're a newer starting out player from 0 to 4k, it's going to be a bit difficult for you to train from like 30 to 50 or 30 to 60. So my recommendation is to do team dungeons which you can do from the white light bulb on the left side of your screen. There are three team dungeons. There are Rihanna Straits, Gold Beach, and Inner Fairy Academy. You can see them all here in the screenshot. Uh, I would recommend doing all three of them. It's pretty, it's pretty simple, and it'll get you all the way to level like 61, I think, if I'm not wrong. So if you're a bit under, if you're a bit under geared, if you, if you don't really have that many link skills, you're not really that geared, highly suggest doing uh, Gold Beach. You're doing Gold Beach, uh, Inner Fairy Academy, and Rihanna Straits. The team dungeons are great, all the way up to level 60. Then after after you reach that those levels, blah blah blah, you keep going. <laughs> like these 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 training maps are not like the best. Or like I'm not saying that you should definitely train here. This is just a general guide. There are many, many, many training guides out there from like zero to two hundred. And I would highly recommend that if you're very serious about it, you go and watch those videos instead. This one is just like a cursory glance at what you at, at what you can possibly at the what maps you can possibly train at. So just yeah, experiment a bit if you want. But if not, you can just stick to these. This is this is where I train basically because I'm too lazy to go and find new maps. <laughs> but yeah, um, again, seventy to one hundred, one hundred to one twenty. For one hundred to one twenty, you can you kind of need a little bit of star force. So either you pick up a Zakum weapon from killing Zakum. Uh, oh yeah, remember that at um, uh, ninety at level ninety you can go to Zakum, or if you're playing a weak class, you go at level hundred and you can level up a bunch of times at Zakum. Make sure you have all the EXP buffs running, make sure you pick up a rune before you go to Zaku. And yeah, you need a bit of Star Force. Uh, hopefully you have some tradable training gear or you picked up a Zaku weapon and you can use it. Uh, and yeah. At 120 to 140 you're gonna need even more Star Force, so suggest buying cheap gear like Zaku Face and Eye or Golden Clover Bell or Ifia Ring and Necklace or yeah, stuff like that. That will give you like cheap Star Force all the way up to 10 stars. And you should be able to train at these maps quite comfortably. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much it for 0 to 4k. You basically get your link skills done first, and afterwards you start working slowly on the level 140 characters that you want. Eventually along the way you reach level 4, uh, you reach 4k before you're done with your union planning list, and that's okay. Basically you're, you've, you've passed the, inter the basic stage already in your intermediate stage. So we'll talk about intermediate. Intermediate is not very much different from 0 to six, zero to 4k actually. It's a lot of tying up loose ends. Like Basically, you're just training all the rest of your characters that aren't 140 yet to 140. So the reason why I recommend level 140 is because at level 140, your characters gain another union block piece. So basically, they upgrade from a 2 block piece to a 3 block piece. So when you go to your union... Can I access union from here? Oh, I can. Oh, I can't. Damn it. <laughs> okay, never mind. Basically, uh, on your union board, 
you can you can put characters on the union board and like level 100 characters are two block uh, are two blocks wide and then at, at level 140 they become three blocks wide so that's why you want them at one level 140 and you don't want to go from level 140 to 200 so quickly because 140 to 200 requires a lot of planning and it requires a lot of gear so my my suggestion is to get all 40 of your characters that contribute to your union board to level 140. Uh, you'll get you about 5.6k union levels yada, yada, and your main will contribute as well and you Probably be like 5.7k by the end of the by the by the time you're finished with all your 40 characters. Um Okay, so again, this is another thing. You should do all of these uh you should do you should try your best to take advantage of like EXP events to level your mules. So things like bonking events like in Hotel Maple, you can get free levels from just capping coins every day, or you can get from terror burning or Haste or G3 or Dynamic Duo, which is coming up by the way, Dynamic Duo is coming up, which is the main reason why I'm making this guy. Um, take advantage of, EX, uh, of EXP events to level your union, obviously. So, after you get all your 40 characters to 140, the next step is to get characters from 140 to 200. Because if you train more than 40 characters, the 41st character won't contribute to your union levels. Only the first 40, the first 40 highest levels contribute to your union level. So once you have everything at 140, you kind of have to go further beyond already, beyond 140 to 200. So 140 to 200 is a very painful set of levels. I highly recommend, highly, highly recommend that you take advantage of EXP events. And over here, you'll see my recommendation is to train Hayato, Yunwall, Expo, Night Lord, and Zero to, one, to 200 first. These are these 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 characters are fucking painful to level. All of these characters are super painful, but I mean, best to get the worst out of the way first, and also also because they help your union characters the most as well. All right, so these are the five that I will do. I will highly recommend terror burning at least one, if not two of them, at the very least. Um, take advantage of terror burning events basically. If you can't terror burn them, like things like zero, you can't terror burn, you can't die duo. It's a pain in the ass. You're just gonna have to struggle through it and just do it. Anyways, so okay, some very important tips for 140 to 200. So for, from so from 0 to 140 is pretty smooth sailing. Like you won't really encounter that many issues. You won't say you won't say like uh you won't say like feel like it's damn slow, or maybe you will, I don't know. But to me, 140 0 to 140 is pretty fast. You can probably do it within like two hours for each character, two to three hours, depending uh on how many buffs you have available. But 140 to 200 is fucking painful. Like it's the most painful set of levels. <laughs> In, in Maple Story for a lot of characters. So I have a few tips to help out. It's not going to make your grinding experience insanely good, but it is going to make your grinding experience better. So first first tip is to please, please get 100% crit rate on all your characters. Back, borrow, steal, I don't care how you get it. Get 100% crit rate. Um, the best way to get it is link skills, union, and hyperstat. Uh, link your union, you can add into the crit rate uh, the crit rate union on the top right hand corner of your union board. Hyperstat, you can add crit rate for hyperstat. Link skills comes from Phantom and from uh, Explorer Archer. The major thing that I see people do wrong is that they think that EXP obtained is very important and they over invest into EXP obtained. So for like example, in hyperstat, you can get EXP obtained. Uh, I can show you. So in your hyperstat, there's this stat here called EXP obtained and it gives you EXP, it gives you extra EXP per mob kill. And in your union board, there's also EXP obtained. It also gives you extra EXP obtained per mock kill. But this is like a gigantic trap because it gives you 10% at level 15 for hyperstat. And it gives you 10% for filling the whole union board of EXP obtained in your union board. And in total, that's 20%. That is really, really little. 20% EXP when you're running every single EXP buff in the game is something like 1% or 1.5% final EXP. So in total, you'll be training 1% faster. It's really, really small. Especially when you're thinking about like the time that it takes to level from 0 to 200, probably it's like 7, 8 hours. 1% of that is really, really, really not a lot of time. That's like, I don't know, 5 minutes, 5 to 10 minutes of your time. So I don't, I definitely don't suggest getting EXP obtained. What you should be doing is in focusing solely on getting 100% crit rate, then focusing on crit damage and damage. In your hyperstat, as well as your as as well as your union board, because from one forty to two hundred, the mobs get very very tanky, and you need to one shot mobs. Like if you don't one shot mobs, so here's here's just like a rough example. If you're two shotting mobs, you're killing mobs twice as slow as you should be. If you're one shotting mobs, you are killing them two times faster than if you're two shotting because it takes you one less attack, right, or one less skill usage. 
So basically getting 100% crit rate and like dealing as much damage as possible and one-shotting mobs basically means that you can uh, speed your way through. <laughs> like you can, you, it gives you like two times EXP, quote unquote, two times EXP, not really, but it basically gives you a much bigger EXP boost than adding EXP obtained hyperstat or EXP obtained in your union board. So please get 100% crit rate and crit damage and damage percent. Uh, this is what it will look like from, this is what more of my mules look like, please don't, Please disregard the name. <laughs> I'm 12. <laughs> uh, but I have 100% crit rate. I have a lot of crit damage. And yeah, basically this is what it should be. Because this lets you one-shot all the mobs. Once you, are, once you can one-shot mobs at like level 180, then you can consider adding the excess hyper stat. Like you see I have 4 left over. You can act, think about adding the excess hyper stat into EXP obtained. That's perfectly fine. Uh, but only once you're starting to one-shot. If you're not one-shotting yet, definitely don't invest into those things. It's... A waste of uh, your resources and it will make your training slower okay so here's the big thing um gearing for 140 or 200 a lot of people have a problem with this and i i'm not saying that i have the best solution this is just what i use you can find better ways probably but this is generally what i use to be able to one shot all the way to 200 on all my mules so you can take a look at all the stuff i have here it's mostly fencer deal stuff the reason why i use fencer deal is because it's tradable so you only need to make one set and then you can just pass it around to the rest of your mules so like for example like if you make a fencer deal warrior set all your warriors can use it right because it's tradable and like all warriors pretty much have strength except for demon avenger but no one cares about demon avenger so <laughs> i'm kidding sorry demon avenger means but um basically you can make one set and then you can make 6% main set on epic and then you just yeah just use for every single meal is what i is what i usually do and uh you can you can plot upwards so basically i don't know if you guys know but if you if you cube like level 100 equipment there is no cubing cost cubing level 140 equipment is quite expensive it's like i can't remember really 200k meso or 100k meso per review which means that the cost adds up as you're as you're cubing more and more gear so basically if you want to tot hammer your way up you can you can Get an epic, P, uh, epic level 100 gear, and then after you, you cube it for 6% main stat, and then you tot it all the way up until it's fencer Uh You can look up a video for a tot hammer guide. I'm not going to do a tot hammers guide here. If not, there'll be too many things in this video already. But basically, that's what you can do. Um, for the trade for the untradable accessories, such as the Zakum face and eye, and the Ifya necklace and Royal Black Metal shoulder, the acidus, all, these, all these things that become untradable once you equip, I don't go for epic pot on them because that would be too expensive. You'll spend like a shit ton of money on every single mule if you do that. I just went for a rare 3% main stat. Uh, and it's my recommendation. I don't really recommend going for epic 6%. It's really expensive. On the other hand, for your for your secondary emblem and weapon, I do suggest 6% mag uh, magic or attack percent. Because uh, they, these give you the biggest damage boost. And they you definitely need them from 140 to 200. For sure. Like any of these, uh, all, all three of these, your WSE basically, you need you need them at 6% attack slash magic attack. Uh, for the weapon, you can choose either Fafnir or Abso, depending on which one's cheaper. Abso tends to be quite cheap actually for lower classes, so you can think about picking up an Abso weapon, especially for the weaker classes. It's really up to you. And, okay, so 12 star sounds like pretty expensive, right? But my, my, my recommendation is to wait for a 1 plus 1 star force event. Right here, one plus one Starforce event is your best friend. Basically, it will cut down the cost by like three or four times. It's very very good for cubing uh for star forcing everything to twelve star. Basically, you can go from zero to twelve star in like a couple of mil. It's quite easy. So yeah, that's my recommendation. Um, you should technically be comfortably one shotting all the way up to Twilight Perion with this gear. So it at the end of the day, it looks something like this. This is what um your gear should look like technically. Or at least is what I use for training my mules. And it works perfectly fine. So, I mean, if you if you have a better way, use it. If not, you can try out my method. If not, you can look for other guides on curing your mules for union training. But uh, this is what I recommend. Okay, moving on. Uh, training mats for 140 to 200. These, these, these levels are super painful. They're going to take very long. I recommend getting cash 2x from 140 to 200. From like 0 to 140, you don't really have to use cash 2x. It still goes by quite quickly unless you're quite a whale. Um, but if you are doing 140 to 200, I would definitely, definitely recommend getting a cash 2x, at the very minimum a cash 2x. Uh, these are all the things that you can do. You'll notice that from 150 to 180, I suggest that you stay at Kuning Tower because this map is really good. Like any of these Kuning Tower maps are actually pretty good. And the alternative to going to these maps is to go to Omega Sector at Star Force Aliens. And this is a very, 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 very tanky mob. It's very difficult to one-shot these mobs with your mules. So I, I don't really suggest going to Omega Sector at level 160. 
my recommendation is to stay at Kerning Tower all the way until 180. Um, after that, you go to Twilight Perion. There's a bunch of Twilight Perion maps. Yada, yada. Choose whichever one you want. Or you can go to Fox Valley. Fox Valley is not bad also. Uh, choose, whatever, choose whatever map you want. Uh, remember that 199.5. You can go to your light bulb on the left side, the, the white light bulb, and you can do uh, the Haven Story quest. It's a few short quests, and basically it gives you like 50% EXP, so it, goes you, it, gives you, uh, it gets you all the way to 100. All right. So at the final push for six, for, from 6k to 8k union, uh, it's, the same, it's pretty much the same thing as 4 to, 6K, uh, 4 to 6k union. You're just tying up loose ends again. You're just grinding all the mules that aren't, six, that aren't uh, 200 yet to 200. So all the level 140 mules are getting them all to 200, and it's very painful. It, remember that union grinding is a marathon, it's not a sprint. So it's going to take you a lot of time. You don't, you don't really expect it to be done within the first... You don't really expect to be done within the first month, or even the first two months. I think it will take you at least like three or four months to be done with union grinding, at, you to, to reach 8k, unless you're crazy and you grind like one mule a day to 200 or something. But I don't really recommend that. If not, you'll burn out. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's basically just getting all your 140 mules to 200. At the end of the day, once you have around 38, 39 level 200 mules, you'll be AK Union. And you'll be happy. Hey. There's also this Union Grip Planner by Xenogens. This guy is a very cool guy. Guy or girl is a very, very cool guy or girl. Basically, uh, there's a Legion Solver. I can show you how it works. Oh, fuck. No, that's the wrong thing. <laughs> One second. So it's a union grid solver, you input all your pieces here, you click whatever the hell you want, like however you want to arrange them, and then uh, you click solve, and then it solves for you. So you can see like exactly how to place your pieces. It's super useful. This is like a godsend for a lot of people. So I've included a link here, all credit goes to Xenogens, of course, and uh, you can use it however you want to arrange your union board. Yeah. <laughs> There's a big kick by here. Yeah. But yeah, I hope I hope my guide helps. I hope uh you aren't too intimidated by union grinding. I hope uh this will help all of you out when you're trying to go for whatever whatever union that you're going for. Four, six, eight K up to you. Ten K I can't really give any tips. But four four to eight K, yeah, I hope I hope this guide helps. Um Yeah, I don't really have anything else really. Let me think. Yeah. Make sure you take advantage of Tazia. Tazia is coming for Maple. All the people that are playing Maple C, please. Oh, of course. Why did I include this at the end? Disclaimer: This is only for Maple C. This doesn't really work out for GMS because there's a lot of different things for GMS. There's like level three links and and different characters and all that jazz, and it's a bit different for GMS. So you can't really take my word for what it is for GMS. Uh, for Maple C, it works out perfectly fine. So yeah. Anyways, thanks for watching the guide, guys. Uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Okay, bye. Okay, bye.